Ava and Carol Detective Agency, The Mystery of the Pharaoh's Diamonds. Written by Thomas Lockhaven and Emily Chase. Narrated by Amy Johnson. Chapter 1. The Scientific Burrito. Ava woke up annoyed at the world. She blew a wet strand of hair from the corner of her mouth. Gross. Ava cringed as she peeled her vibrating phone off her cheek. It made a wet, suctioning sound like sweaty legs on a leather sofa. Ava! A voice chirped. Time for breakfast! Ava took in a deep breath, held it for a moment, then sighed dramatically. How could anyone be so chipper this early? She rolled out of bed, landing with a heavy thud, taking her blankets with her. You all right up there? Her mother called up the stairs. Fine, Ava shouted. She rolled across the room, successfully wrapping herself into a blanket burrito. Exhausted from the effort, Ava lay motionless on the floor for a moment, staring at her ceiling. She was compelled into motion by the seductive smell of bacon. Still swaddled, she scooched out her bedroom, across the hall, to the top of the stairs. She was about to descend a la bobsled when her mother rounded the corner. Clearly, she had some type of disaster prevention sixth sense, or an anti-fun gene. Maybe both. What on earth are you doing? Have you lost your mind? I'm rehearsing for a school play. The Cocoon That Could, a poignant story of a butterfly, Eva? Her mother's face tightened. <sighs> Fine. It's for a science project. You don't want to impede scientific progress, do you? How about you choose a project that doesn't end up with you in the hospital in a body cast? <laughs> Mom, be reasonable, chuckled Ava. We don't get to choose science. It chooses us. You married a scientist. Surely, of all people, you should understand. Ava Clark. Her mother's voice took on a much crisper tone. It was followed by the look that only a mother can give. <sighs> all right. She shrugged her way out of her blankets, knotted them up in a ball, and threw them onto her bed. Science would have to wait, at least until her parents went to work. Ava crossed the kitchen, turned on the faucet, and washed her hands. Here, said her mom, handing her a mixing bowl. Make yourself useful. Ava ran her finger along the inside of the bowl and licked the pancake batter off her finger. Tasty. As she scrubbed the bowl, she leaned forward and gazed out the window. The tiny town of Livingston was alive with activity. People were fetching their newspapers, walking their dogs, breathing in the fresh September air. Ava decided that she would give the morning another chance, and perhaps even smile. Good morning, Ava's dad said through a yawn as he shuffled into the kitchen. He ran his hand through his thick, curly brown hair and plopped into a chair at the kitchen table. "'Good morning, Father,' Ava said brightly, drying her hands on a dish towel. "'Morning, Aves,' he said, stifling another yawn. "'Late night? Doing sciency things?' "'Yep. The CDC sent me a fascinating report last night that they wanted me to review. Amazing reading.' Ava's father was a highly sought-after biologist. She was pretty sure the Center of Disease Control had him on speed dial. I, too, tried to venture into the world of science this morning. A little physics experiment. But it was quashed by the Department of Safety and Boredom. Ava gestured to her mother. Your daughter was attempting to slalom down the stairs wrapped in blankets, explained Mrs. Clark. Charles coughed into his hand. Ava could see a tiny smile forming at the edges of his mouth. You gotta be careful, Aves. Who else is gonna look after your mom and I when we're old and senile? 
A tap-tap at the door rescued Ava from answering. We'll have to continue this discussion later. Friendship knocketh, and I simply can't allow it to wait. Carol Miller, Ava's best friend, stood on the porch, looking as if she were about to burst with excitement. Her eyes sparkled like crystal blue marbles in the sunlight. Did you hear? Tell me you heard, said Carol, shaking Ava by the shoulders. That you are insane? Yes, come in. My parents have already scheduled an intervention. My mother's burning sage and chanting as we speak. Do you ever check your phone? The Hancock Museum was robbed last night. Ava hesitated a beat. Are you serious? What's there to steal? Carol let out an exasperated puff of air. Hello? Ramsey's exhibit on loan to our museum from Egypt, ring a bell? Asked Carol, following Ava to the kitchen. Big Brain just said the Hancock Museum was robbed. Carol nodded in agreement. I knew something like this was going to happen, said Mrs. Clark. Ava shot her mom a quizzical look. The security at the museum? She shook her head. Don't even get me started. My dad said they updated the entire security system and even built a safe room that was approved by an Egyptian dignitary, explained Carol. You never told me about that, said Ava. My dad's an architect. He's done work for just about everyone in town. The museum was just another job. The only reason the Hancock Museum was even allowed to host the exhibit was because Eugene McDonnell, the philanthropist that bankrolled the original Egyptian expedition, his grandson lives here in Livingston, added Mrs. Clark. That's amazing, said Carol. History makes me swoon. Destined to be alone. The title of a book I'm writing about Carol's life, in case anyone's interested. I interviewed Mr. McDonnell for The New Yorker. After its run here, the exhibit was to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in November. They just announce where an exhibit is going? Asked Ava. Seems counterintuitive as far as keeping priceless artifacts safe. Look at you throwing around the five-syllable words. Thank you, Carol. Contrary to popular belief, I happen to have a massive vocabulary. I simply don't know the meaning of half the words. They have to announce it to the public, Ava. Museums get a lot of publicity and money by offering exhibitions like this. Charles blew across the rim of his coffee and took a sip. I would have thought the Hancock Museum would have learned a lesson after what happened to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in 1990. Okay, that's oddly specific, said Ava. It's the biggest art heist in history, explained Mrs. Clark. Thieves dressed up as police officers. They told the security guards that someone had reported a disturbance. The guards let them in, and the crooks stole 13 paintings worth over $500 million. Were they ever caught? Carol inquired. No, the FBI never caught them said Mrs. Clark. I've actually written quite a bit about art heists. The unfortunate thing is 80% of them go unsolved. 80%? Ava stroked her chin thoughtfully. If I ever decide to go into a life of crime, it's going to be robbery. Her parents stared at her, mortified. What? Ava asked innocently. Look at the benefits. There's only a 20% chance that you'd have to bail me out. I'm sure they'll catch whoever robbed the museum. There are literally cameras everywhere. It's not like they can just walk into an airport with... Wait, what did they steal? A sarcophagus, teased Ava. Ava's mom made several swipes on her phone. It says that five diamonds were stolen, valued at $25 million dollars. Carol's right, though. They can't just hop on a plane with millions of dollars worth of diamonds. So what's the use of stealing them? Who are they going to sell them to? My guess is they'll either try to sneak them out of the country somehow and sell them to a private collector, or they'll begin negotiations with the insurance company that is insuring them. Why would they talk to the insurance company? We've got your diamonds. We promise we won't hurt them. Let's make a deal. 
you're not too far off, laughed Mrs. Clark. They'll negotiate with the insurance company for a few million. The insurance company will agree to an amount, and they'll anonymously make the trade. Sounds like a ripoff, but, Ava conceded, it's better to pay a few million for something worth twenty million than to not have it at all. I'm sorry to interrupt, said Carol. This is fascinating. Really, it is. But the bus is going to be here in about two minutes. Ava shoveled several forkfuls of pancakes in her mouth and hurried over to the refrigerator. She grabbed a juice box for herself and one for Carol, then hurried across the kitchen and slung on her backpack. See you guys this afternoon, yelled Ava over her shoulder as she rushed for the door. Carol smiled and waved to Ava's parents as she followed close on her friend's heels. If you're enjoying Thomas Locke Haven's audiobook content, please like and subscribe. It's the best way to help out the channel.